Everybody knows every Tuesday night at 8, another exciting and insightful edition of the MCW cast. I'm Legacy MCW announcer Larry Legend. I'm MCW promoter Dan McDevitt. And I'm Tara. Welcome to the cast. I demand that you refer to yourself as the heart of I- MCW, Tara. <laughs> Okay, that's how everybody else calls me that, but all right, fine, I'll call myself the heart of MCW. (laughs) Relish in it, drink it in, there would be no birthday parties, I've I've seen them, they're lovely (laughs) t-shirts. Thank Um, you. But yeah, we're we're back, episode 64. That's right. We're on our way to, what's double 52? 104? Yeah, (laughs) we're we're on our way to 104, which is season three, we'll be at, before you know it, you blink and you miss it. I know, we are moving right on into April, and we've got a lot of... We've got shows coming up. We've got some very big shows coming up. Um, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who's been following along and listening to us um, on Facebook and YouTube. And, of course, listening on the major podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Breaker, Radio Public, CastBox, and all of the rest. So thank you for that. And if you're watching along live on YouTube and Facebook, you know, when we first got rip roaring with this podcast, I used to see a lot more conversation going on. I would sometimes jump in it myself uh, Mm -hmm. post uh, the episode or when we go to break. But um, yeah, interact with one another. Tell us, you know, who you want to see. The MCW cast Twitter. We're over 100 followers now. It only took us a year (laughs) um, and we want more. So let us know. Interact with us. I had a dream of us being the most interactive podcast out there, you know, and and really interacting with our Dr. D's and our Bretto's and Greg Papa Lucas's and all of our longtime MCW faithful fans. But uh, I feel like our, our sort of reach is a little diminishing. So I encourage you say something in the chat interact talk out loud we love to see it we love to hear it right and don't worry about interacting after the fact so it, i know a lot of people myself included catch streaming content way after it has premiered yeah. so don't worry about that go ahead drop a comment something like that in there if there was something you found interesting or something you'd like to hear more of or see more about because a lot of times we just run out of time in the podcast so mm-hmm. we have lots of information that we just don't even get to so if there's a topic that piqued your interest please Please let us know because we can respond to that and bring you all into the conversation as well. But one thing that we're not on the MCW cast is rude. Right. So let us <laughs> let us address the elephant at the room or at the table. And uh, I'm not trying to you know diminish your stature, sir. But right here with us on the MCW cast, the one and only BJJ World Champion Tim mm-hmm. Spriggs. What's good, everybody? It's hey, Tim welcome Bush, back, Spriggs here. <laughs> It's good to be back. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. For a solo episode now. This That's time. right. Exactly. Before yes. we had him on with Chad Clark, mm-hmm. uh, but now I'm here for a brief segment. Right. Spotlights on you. Yes, I'm used to it by now. I've been <laughs> in the game for a long time. You know, I belong in the spotlight since day one. Since the day I was born, I was destined to be in the spotlight. Whether it was in theater, sports, Hollywood. I just filmed a movie this past week here at uh, yeah. Joppa Arena. So I'm used to the spotlight, but thanks for having me once again. All right, another, well, I see you. Another person that was in the theater. This is like a t- – are we well, in the theater? Well, that's what – Yes. Yes. Uh, well, yes. That's why I popped so big uh, our last episode. Uh, like to Hootie Miles. Every episode yes, now, yes. We're yes. out with people <laughs> with theater backgrounds, really. Well, I don't know. Maybe we're on to something is what why I popped so big when we had to Hootie on. And mm-hmm. so Hootie mentioned that that was his background because I thought immediately of you, Tim. I thought of Eel O'Neal. Mm-hmm. I thought of Erica Lee. I thought Lila of Eric Gray. Ro- L- L- Lila Gray. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, even our very own Leo Rush, who's – like dabbling now mm-hmm. in in films and television and things like that it's they go hand in glove yeah. and, but we come from an era my era of breaking in where it was kind of a taboo thing to be like yeah i have a background in theater i know shakespeare and sonnets and <laughs> things like that because it's like what are you doing here you know but now in 2022 you can be loud and proud about it and it can pay dividends well, it is a natural transition, I think, because there's so much um, in the theatrical aspect of wrestling. And also, you know, part that goes along with acting is putting out your putting yourself out there, mm-hmm. you know, reaching out, going out to casting calls. It's very similar to reaching out to promoters and trying to get booked. You know, it, there's such a similarity there. There's also so. a real big similarity in the uh, the nature of kind of wanting to be the show stealer. 
Okay, so everyone's going to be in the play. People are going to be in the ensembles. People are going to have supporting roles. But you want people to leave that theater remembering your performance. Just like when we do an MCW show right here at the MCW Arena, whether your first match, second match, or the main event, you want people leaving going, oh, I really can't wait to see that boom hater, you know, whoever, <laughs> you know, do something with Ken Dixon again, you know. Yeah. It's, that's what you want. So the competition is not only fierce in the actual thing that you're doing, but then amongst your peers to be the very best. And you, Tim Spriggs, are getting some some uh, action there in that regard. People are rub. talking about you after our last event yes. um, in Parkville. There were some comments made. Some of our fans they they noticed how quickly you ran through one of our seasoned veterans here at MCW. You know. Chief Head, yeah, Chief yeah. Yes. old yeah. George. One so. of the most interesting things I think we should you know is MVP. Posting on his Instagram, right? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yes. And that's so, so MVP mentioned in his Instagram Mm -hmm. um, that he trained with you, Jiu Jitsu. Yes. Before I ever started in professional wrestling, I was known as the best grappler in the world. You can Google me right now, everybody (laughs) that's watching back at home. And I met MVP through Instagram because he's a Jiu Jitsu aficionado, he's actually a world champion, he is a legitimate shooter as they say in the industry and he contacted me because he wanted to know this throw that i do it's called the train wreck i've given several people concussions with it i've submitted people with it it's one of the most devastating techniques in all of martial arts he came to maryland to train with me we exchanged knowledge he peaked he he taught me some game about wrestling and i taught him a lot about jujitsu and i use that knowledge to take me to where I am today. Of course, everyone at MCW helped me as well, but that's how I met MVP. We're really close. I consider him my OG in the game. So was was this like while was this after he was already established in pro wrestling like during I guess after he left WWE and all that or was this way before then? This this was between uh him not being in WWE and him coming back. Coming so back, right yeah. before okay. he came back we got pretty close. I helped him prepare for the world of jujitsu in Las Vegas a few years ago. And he was just talking about the business, but he wasn't in WWE yet. I, I, that's so, Again. so he, he won a championship. Yes. He placed the year I helped him and he recently won. He is a brown belt in Brazilian jujitsu right now. He is a shooter. I never knew wow. that about him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't I know that either. Yes. I didn't know that about him until I saw that Instagram post and I saw that and someone texted me up and was like, hey, man, MVP was putting over Tim Spriggs. And mm-hmm. I was like, and then I looked it up and I didn't I didn't even realize he trained into that. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, so now did you talk to him about getting into wrestling? Absolutely. That was part of the reason why we started communicating so much because he wanted to learn jujitsu and I respect MVP as a wrestler he is a legend he's arguably the greatest united states champion there ever was he's a superstar and i learned a lot from him i i mean i i personally like from promoter and behind the scenes guy i think m you know bobby lashley's rise had a lot to do with mvp and mvp mm-hmm. talking for him and become part of the hurt business i think you know like um where, where Bobby Lashley's at now in his career definitely, I think, had a lot to do with bringing MVP in and making him mm-hmm. a part of, of his character. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So no doubt, you yeah. know what I mean, MVP was... Even though Leo Leo paved the way. Yeah, Leo paved you the know. way, yeah. but, yeah. but MVP kind of stood. Yeah. Lashley. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he even gave him a shout-out the night Lashley finally won the world championship, mm-hmm. I remember. Um, but, yeah, that's... Uh, I, I think that I had known something about MVP's background because when he was first introduced to the WWE, he was uh, MVP for a reason, his uh, athleticism and, mm-hmm. and what he was bringing to the table and accomplishments he had made outside of being a, a pro wrestler was what really brought him to the dance. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I had some knowledge of him uh, you know, having a little bit of expertise in, um, in uh, jiu-jitsu. So at the time when you met him, I guess, were you toying with training to be a pro wrestler and that's why you kind of... Like you, you had it in your. I guess you were probably just focused in your in jujitsu, but I was focused on jujitsu. But once I started watching wrestling again, I had always had it in my mind that I would eventually go into professional wrestling because, quite frankly, especially now, professional wrestling is where I need to be. It's my pathway to the life that I want because jujitsu can't afford me any longer. I have greater aspirations. You know, I like fast cars. <laughs> I like beautiful women. 
I like my palatial estate in Howard County. I like these <laughs> things. I deserve the finer things. I mean, you see how I'm dressed now. Whenever I go to these jujitsu events, people are shocked because I come in there with a bespoke suit. You know what bespoke means, right? That means mm -hmm. my suit has my name in it, not Jose Bank, not Men's Warehouse, my name. I'm used to those things. And I reached the pinnacle of jujitsu. And in my mind for years, I knew that the place that I needed to be was in that squared circle. I looked up to guys coming up like The Rock, mm -hmm. Dave Batista. These guys made the transition from professional wrestling and made even more money in Hollywood. Speaking of Hollywood, <laughs> I was in a movie. I'm sorry That's I'm right. jumping ahead. <laughs> no, no. But I was, You've got a lot going on. I have yeah. so much going Seriously. on. You know, I am the modern day Deion Sanders in sports. I've already mastered jujitsu. I'm here to take over wrestling and I'm here to take over Hollywood and that's been my goal, Dan, for years. So it's always been in the back of my mind. It's just that now, the time is now. So you know, it's a lot. Of, it's it's a lot of big talk out of you, Tim. But take it from somebody who's been to the upper echelons of different companies. I guarantee you that someone is going to hear the words that are coming out of your mouth right now and want to break you. Because I mean, it's all this well and true. good to say that you're the Deion Sanders of. BJJ or or WWE, but there's always going to be someone that's waiting in the wings that's going to uh, coddle you into a false sense of security that you are the things that you pretend to be or you say that you are, but they like to pull the rug out under a young, handsome, attractive, well-spoken brother as soon as you get almost to the pinnacle of where it is that you aspire to be. So does that ever kind of weigh on your conscience that you know, you've had this success in BJJ. Yes. You want to have this success that is an MVP level or even greater in pro wrestling. Yes. But, but just knowing that jealousy and envy are things that exist in all industries and for the big talk, someone is going to want to shut you up. Well, Larry, you said a word earlier in that sentence. They wanted to break me, right? I'm unbreakable. I'm going to tell you a little story. All right. Okay, I'm going to hear story time with the Mush Master. 2013, I'm on the war path in jiu-jitsu. My goal is to win the Grand Slam in BJJ. That means I need to win the World Championships, the European Championships, the Brazilian Nationals, and the European Championships. I was halfway there. One night, we're training. The next day, we're supposed to fly out to Brazil for the Brazilian Nationals, which is arguably the most difficult tournament in all of jiu-jitsu. And I am training with a 300-pound college wrestler turned jiu-jitsu black belt and another college wrestler turned jiu-jitsu black belt, multiple-time black belt world champion. In the beginning of practice, I'm wrestling them. I take the collegiate wrestler down, the black belt world champion, collegiate wrestler, and I land on his knee on my stomach. I want you guys to imagine, okay. you know, you see Eddie Guerrero doing the frog splash and someone lifts their knees up and mm -hmm. he hurts. Oh, well, in real life, just like in wrestling, I mean, in wrestling, wrestling is real life. It actually happens and Eddie's really tough, but I actually almost died from that. You see, when I landed on my teammate's knee, it perforated my intestines, so I was bleeding out. Oh my goodness. This is about 15 minutes in practice. I just assume that I got hit in the liver and I'm being soft because in my mind, I'm unbreakable. I don't care about pain. I'll push through. So I finish practice. I'm in the fetal position on the floor in the locker room. I end up getting a ride to the hospital. They do x-rays, CAT scans, eventually put me under. I wake up, I look at my stomach, sutures down across my stomach and they tell me that Tim, you almost died. If you had went on that plane the next morning, you wouldn't be here. You would have passed away on the flight. You'd been dead by the time you made it to Brazil. They said, my season is over. I'm lucky to not be carrying around a bag with my own feces, a colostomy bag. Wow. Done. They thought my career was over, but you know what I did? Within a week, I was on my feet again, walked out of the hospital. I didn't want a wheelchair. I walked out of the hospital and I said, I will be world champion this time next year. And you know what I did? I won the world title. Grand slammed the next year. So I'm unbreakable. I can deal with politics. That's nothing but jujitsu. I get haters all the time. People have been trying to plot on my downfall since I got into jujitsu. And I know people are hating on me in wrestling as well, but they can't stop me. I'm the chosen one. I've been through life 
life-threatening injuries. I've gone through the worst things imaginable in and outside the ring, and nothing will stop me. And I will get to the top by any means necessary. I don't care who it is. They're getting knocked over if they get in my way. Does that answer your question? Wow. By any means necessary (laughs) um, actually is an exclamation point of an answer to my question. Uh, We want to hear more from you, and our viewers at home want to hear more from you. We do need to pause for Internet Station identification, but stay with us, folks. We're going to be right back here with Mushmaster Tim Spriggs. You already know your child is a wrestling superstar, so give them the chance to prove it by stepping into the ring with the most memorable birthday they will ever have. A party at the MCW Arena is a -a one-of-a-kind experience that gives kids of any age a chance to live their dreams and be a part of the show. Every guest will enjoy the celebration as they make memories that will last a lifetime. So skip the ball pits and trampolines and visit mcwprowrestling.com to sign up for an MCW birthday party today. All right, welcome back to the cast. We are here with our guest tonight, Tim Spriggs. Welcome. So we were chatting about your accomplishments earlier, and um, I just wanted to ask, and I haven't had a chance to do this yet, but how did you get your name, The Mushmaster? That is an awesome story, oh, actually. I can't wait to hear. Well, there was a tournament. It was a team tournament. So it was five-on-five five team tournament in jiu-jitsu. So you have four teams. It was my team, Team Lord Urban, and there was three other teams. They don't really matter because... <laughs> They're not my team. <laughs> and it was basically single elimination. Our team had a first round matchup with another team. And then there was these two other teams. And someone on one of the other teams that wasn't on the side of my bracket had went online and just called me all types of names that I don't think I can say on this lovely podcast of yours. <laughs> called me everything but my God-given name. Said he was going to break my leg mm. if – we were to make it to the finals against his team. Unluckily for him, we made it to the finals pretty easily, if I may add. And now he was face to face with me. Side note, at the weigh-ins, he was staring off in the corner looking at me, and I'm standing in the middle chilling because my thing is, if you want the smoke, I'm down whenever you want it. If you have a problem with me, you can approach me. Now, I'm not saying that I'm invincible. Anyone can get their butt kicked, but I'm going to make it hard for you. And I'm a man, so I'm going to end up fighting you, and someone's going to get locked up or go to the hospital. Nonetheless, he didn't want that smoke. So he was just staring at me he, after talking all this trash at the weigh-in. The next day, we're set to face each other, and he talked all this trash, guys. He said he was going to break my leg. He called me all kinds of horrible names. And then I proceeded to put him on his back, get on top of him, and mount, full mount, on top of him. Like, do you remember a Christmas story? Yeah, of mm-hmm. course. Where yeah. Ralphie beat up the bully, yeah. Marcus. It was like that. Except I can't you can't punch people in jujitsu. Right. But I just mushed him. I had my hand over his face for 10, 15 minutes, holding his nose, gave him a wet willy, covered his mouth, and he couldn't do anything. He just sat there like this, like because <laughs> uh, he knew he was dead. I could have killed him. I could have Ended his life right then and there, but I wanted to follow the rules because at the end of the day, I'm a businessman, and it would have cost us a lot of money if we did not win this match. But that's how I got the name, the Mushmaster. Wow. All right. He shouldn't open his mouth. So I got to ask a question, and excuse my ignorance, but I have been in wrestling for 30 years. (laughs) Yes. Do you, when you have five on five, do you tag in and out? No. Is it like that? <laughs> it's five <laughs> different <laughs> matches. It's, 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 I mean, it's, I was, it's best out of five. Somebody watching this was was wondering that. It's best out of five. We had different weight classes. So we had a woman and four guys. So there was a women's division. There's not enough women in jiu-jitsu to have different weight classes. So we had a woman okay. on our team, and we had different weight classes, like 145, 155, 185 heavyweight, something like that. And I was the heavyweight. That's how it works. Best okay. three gotcha. out of five. Kind of like the NBA. Okay. So person. you don't actually okay. tie them up and 
No. <laughs> Imagine. It, 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 it would have been way worse. It would have been way worse with him. My teammates. I mean, I'm just asking. You, that's a good question. A valid question. Because yeah. sometimes yeah. in Russia, they have like tag team MMA or like. Oh, really? just Yeah, it's like five on five. They just go fight each other in a cage. That's Russia, though. Oh, yeah, I've okay. seen They're that online right <laughs> where they do that in cages and wondered like, what the hell is that? They have, have you ever seen yeah. it online? Yeah. Or uh, what, I got asked to do a, a reality show once. One of the one of, another reality show, and they were having night fights where you wear chain like mail. armor. Yes, oh, like nice. armor oh, wow. with swords and stuff. And I said, I'm not doing this. You're not paying me enough, and I'm not going to get injured. I'm not going to cost myself some jujitsu. Oh, wow. and, you know, and they weapons? They have weapons? Yes, like we, real ones. We oh. beat the hell out of each other with like swords and stuff. What? Yeah. yeah, and I we've mean, never uh, heard of this, so it must not have gone anywhere. Yeah. I mean, like, we haven't seen the jousting reality yeah, show or, you know, a flail or whatnot, yeah. you know. I'm glad you, you thought better than to do that. Uh, right. um, oh, wow. Yeah, there's yeah. never been a joustomania. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not going to. Maybe a All right, one of my favorite virtual reality games is a jousting game. Mm. I used to love the arcade game <laughs> Joust. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Remember? Well, they, I used to love it. When there's we this place in New York City that is, like, four floors of nothing but VR games and they have a VR jousting thing there so you get an opponent and you it, it's so cool though like it's very I, I like VR games but <laughs> it's very realistic so right on I would watch a jousting reality show <laughs> so Tim you mentioned that that guy that you know you earned the name Mushmaster from was giving you a lot of heat on the internet yeah uh, I heard that after uh, I, of course I, I missed the uh, Parkville uh, debut but I heard that after you kind of handled G-Fed, you got a lot of uh, commentary from some of the MCW faithful who mm -hmm. were wondering who you were and how you you beat them so decidedly and so quickly and uh, kind of maybe some allusions to maybe politics played into into that match Uh mm -hmm. What do you mean by politics? Well, and they and the, the one thing that a lot of them said is, um, but he kind of sums it up. A lot of them were like, "Well, they didn't. We didn't get introduced. They didn't do enough to introduce." And it's like, what do we have to introduce him? Just Google him, right? Right. Yeah. Everyone yeah. has these in their pockets. Yeah. People them. listening right now, this could be on their television, but they're scrolling through their phones right now. So if you're listening to this, or even if you're half watching, go on your phone, Google Tim. Spriggs or Tim Bushmaster Spriggs or whatever version of that you want and you will see why I'm bringing legitimacy not just to MCW but professional wrestling that's all the introduction that you need yeah, I would say to all of those fans that were giving Tim Spriggs a little bit of the static mm -hmm. online, maybe you should have watched his first edition of the MCW cast and you would have known his credentials and how a, an athlete of his caliber could go through someone like G-Fed, a veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, it's just another level when you bring that BJJ background and uh, the mouth guard. It says something. And, and I'll say this, too. Like, I'm used to haters. I get haters all the time. I've gotten into jujitsu. I'm more than capable of dealing with it in professional wrestling. But if you guys were mad before, imagine what's going to happen at Breakthrough. Imagine. Yeah. Because now you guys just made it worse for whoever I'm in the ring with. That's right. And you're talking about April 16th. We've got a Breakthrough show coming up. We'll be in Havre de Grace, Maryland, uh, just a little down the road from where we are right now. At the it's State the, Theater. Yeah. I have not been there before, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, but this is a little bit different type of show for us where we're introducing lots of new talent. And, um, you know, many of them are from the training center who have worked their way through for the last couple of years. And some, some are some outside. Yeah, some circuit. other... Um, you know, rising stars on the indies. And of course, we will be, you will be there as well. So, you know, it could, will you be facing a veteran? Will you be facing one of these up and coming indie stars? Will you be facing some, you know, somebody from our training center? Um, will you I, be facing another standout athlete like Miles Hawkins? Yeah. Even, I mean, even though it's only days away, we're still putting some things together. Mm -hmm. So, from yeah. uh, a matchmaking, because the, the, what the people are going to like about this, if some of our regular fans are going to come up to it, it's probably going to be about 12 or 13 matches. So oh, wow. So okay. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be maybe like a three, three and a half hour show, mm -hmm. a little bit longer. But because we're going to break this up into a monthly, like 30 minute. Um, shows for YouTube, a mm -hmm. YouTube specific show to kind of introduce them to some people that they don't get the chance to see. Because at the end of the day, the shows are like a big chessboard 
You know, it's only so many enemy pieces you can get on the board, so it's only so many people you can get on shows. So this is the kind of way to introduce and give other indies, you know, people are always on the indies trying to get an opportunity with MCW. So it's kind of a way we don't have any big national names we're bringing in for mm -hmm. autograph signings to give some of the some younger, fresh talent an opportunity to kind of shine. And be yeah, seen. and we really want to hear feedback from the fans, too, as yeah. well, yeah. after yeah. this show. Like, <clears throat> let us know what what you liked, who you liked, um, who piqued your interest, because, yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of new faces and new names on this show, and, uh, you know, we, we hope that you are thoroughly entertained, because I feel like this is one of those shows where we really have something to appeal to everyone. Like, there's just so many different types of performers that we're going to have, and just so many different things. You know, we've got um, Jadis Quinn, uh, you know, will has been making a name as oh, well. He's definitely um, been making an impact. Yeah, make a fan, a very interesting uh, social media presence. You mm, know, with you, our Jadis Quinn. How would you handle someone like a Jadis Quinn with all of the mind games that we saw him exactly. playing on a uh, Brandon Scott? Brandon Scott was able to, you know, top him. But like, what if what if you had someone like Jadis Quinn with the fishnets on, like kind of caressing your body and stuff? Have you ever had anything like that happen to you in the ring or in BJJ? Probably not. Uh, usually it was, well, it was always with some beautiful woman and it was after <laughs> the event <laughs> when I was celebrating in my hotel or at the club afterwards. But the, the thing is, like, if you, why would he want to put his hands on me? Because if you touch me, you're in grappling range. As soon as I'm able to put my hands on you, it's over. You saw what happened to g -Fed. He's got a point. This is true. Yeah, I right. know. He would avoid me. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. From from being in tournaments, obviously publicly in front of what what was it different? Was it a lot was it a different feeling you going out there in a pro wrestling ring, like in an MCW show compared to being on the mat in jujitsu? It was no the feeling was the same. I was excited. Yeah. And I was supremely confident that I was going to win. And quite frankly, I did win. Most of the time in jiu-jitsu, definitely lately. No different. I actually like pro wrestling more because <laughs> I finally have an opportunity and a platform to show the world just how big of a star I am. I love being able to having all my assistants, my team, Tim, Team Spriggs coming out there with my belts it was great to do. It was great having a packed house in there looking at me. But as far as feeling, same thing. I knew I was going to go in there for the kill, get the job done, and cash mm -hmm. a check. Mm. Tim, I got to tell you, I'm salivating uh, <laughs> beside myself with the anticipation for some of the matchups that we're going to see you in. Mm -hmm. And also in kind of the matchmaking mindset of my own, I'm thinking people are hearing the words coming out of your mouth and they're going to want to try you. Mm -hmm. OK, <laughs> after seeing what you, uh, yeah, you may laugh right now, you may laugh. But after seeing what you did to G Fed, after hearing what's come out of your mouth right now on the MCW cast, I guarantee you there's a locker room full of guys, hungry guys. Mm -hmm. Bring them on. <laughs> Bring on. I'm looking. Is this the camera right here? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. one of bring them on. <laughs> Check this out. I want all the beasts. I want all the tough guys. The reason why I came to MCW is because you guys are the number one independent wrestling promotion in the country. You know what that means? That means it's not just MCW guys that come through here. There's guys from all over the world that come here, and I want them all. Because at the end of the day, when I make it to the top, I don't want any excuses. I don't want anybody to say that I ducked anybody. I didn't want anybody to say I had an easy roll because when I make it to the top, I don't want any excuses. So bring them on. Dan, you're the man. Bring them on. You got connections everywhere in this business. You are respected in this game. And I will proudly carry the MCW banner because in my eyes, this is my promotion. I came here for a reason to take over. And I want all the beasts. So, yes. They can be mad all they want, but there's a way we can handle it. It's right out there in the other room. There is a mm -hmm. ring, and that's where we settle things. Let's sell out these arenas. Let's put on the best matches possible, the biggest matches possible, and let's just see if they can shut me up because I talk and I talk, but I back it up. 
Well, that is the part that's yet to be seen. And that is why I'm saying that many people are hearing what you have to say. And they've seen your credentials in the BJJ arena. But mm -hmm. as far as pro wrestling is concerned, we're ready to see more Me out of Tim Spriggs. Yeah. And we're going to. Yep. So let me ask you this. If you, I know that you've kind of got a blanket open challenge out there. You'll face anyone anytime. Is there someone that you could see yourself having like a dream matchup with? Like somebody out there in the professional wrestling world, <laughs> you know, like just project anybody? out into the future. Anybody. Anybody. Yep. Anybody. 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 Well, huh. I foresee in my future a WrestleMania main event with Roman Reigns. Okay. Definitely. Brock. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, as far as, you know, more independent guys, there's this guy that says he's the best bout machine, Kenny Omega, you know, that guy. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about how great he is, you know, how he has fun matches. They get all these stars. And can I say something, by the way? Yeah. I think, I think star, mat star ratings are the stupidest thing possible. You know what I think a good match is? Me doing what I did to Jeep Fed. I walk in there with all my belts, all the cameras on me. I kick the guy's ass in 15 seconds. I don't remember how long that match was, but I can tell you that my interest was longer than the match. And then I go home, go to my house where all my girls are waiting for me, and we cool. party and we celebrate. That's a good match. Not with some dork with a, with a blog or some newsletter thinks is a good match because I'm trying to get in there and out of there and get paid. So, yes, I would love a match with Kenny Omega. Who cares Let's about how that. good your matches are? Let's see how much of a badass you are. Let's see if you can beat me up. And I doubt it. All right. I'm I saying can, the gears are, the gears are turning in my head. Yeah. I hear lofty goals. I hear Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. I hear Brock Lesnar. I hear Kenny Omega. Lofty, lofty opponents. What about someone like a Fred Yehi? The Savage Weight. The Savage Weight? Well, I mean, that's what he goes by. <laughs> Fred Yehi. I've seen a couple of his matches. You know, I, I, I like his little technical stuff, you know. I, oh. I can tell he, he can wrestle a little bit. That'd be a little fun little exhibition for me, you oh know what I'm saying? Goodness. I would love to have a match with him. Somebody that's going to grapple with me, you know. I respect guys that have this kind of, like, shooter aesthetic. That's why I said his name. Mm -hmm. I love the shooter aesthetic, you know. I think it's really cool. But, you know, I... I seek out those type of matches. I would love those type of matches because it's you right off my alley. You're in the committee. It's <laughs> right up my alley because you know I have to carry the banner of jujitsu, even though I don't really care too much about the industry anymore. But I carry the banner of jujitsu and shooters, mm -hmm. and I take pride in my background. And if we look through the history of professional wrestling, it's super tied to guys that actually got down and dirty in the shooter world, like Luthez. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys were shooters. You know, even Brock Lesnar, Ronda Rousey, even today. There's a long line of Ken guys. Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. Yep. Hey, the 11-time MCW champion, the bruiser. Yeah. That was that was how he came through the door. Kurt we're, Angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bad News Brown, judo Olympian, bronze medalist. Ken Patera. Ken Patera. Mm -hmm. Danny Hodge. Danny Hodge. Danny Hodge. Danny Hodge. Yeah. You're right. There's a long the four pillars, history all those of that. Guys. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. You know? So I take pride in carrying that banner. That's what I'm going to do. So bring on Fred Yehi. Bring all those guys. I don't care. That's right. All the Jonathan know. Greshams, all the Lee oh, Moriarty's. That, all that the, one. That would be a Gresham, good matchup. Yeah. That's oh. one of the ones. That's one of the ones. That's you on want. your list? Yes, Gresham. You know, I want Lesnar, Reigns, Omega, Gresham. All the guys with belts. Okay. All right. Well, um, I, I got to say, this is a, a riveting uh, episode of the MCW cast, and you are literally electrifying the three of us who have, what, 60 years combined experience <laughs> right. together, you know, 30, 20, 20. You just 20. made us senior citizens. <laughs> well, combined, <laughs> combined, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, the future seems like it's going to be bright. I can't wait for Breakthrough on April 16th mm -hmm. from the State Theater in Harvard at Grace. And, you know, I really can't wait to see what, what, what else Tim Spriggs gives us here in MCW Pro and beyond. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'm kind of like for the I first know. time ever at a loss yeah. for words, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was going to bring up a couple of the other matches we've got coming up at Breakthrough, but, you know, I kind of like the suspense aspect of it, too. <laughs> and in the next week, we will be releasing some of these matches and getting them out there. Um, I do want to say this is an intimate venue. So if you are on the fence about getting tickets, you don't want to wait because this is a smaller more only, intimate only setting. It's about 250 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so if you want to so. see 
And Tim, not the Mushmaster Spriggs, left. take out his next opponent. I would definitely, definitely not hesitate to get those tickets. Really um, affordable, too. Just yeah. $25. $25. Yeah. With all price, general admission because it's theater style yeah, seating, theater correct? Style seating. So there's not yep. a bad seat in the house, essentially. No, theater style seating, mm-hmm. right. first come, first serve. Mm-hmm. $25, real affordable. Yeah. Come check it out. You won't be. I don't think you're, you're not. You're going to see a lot of. And, and then, like you said, we, we want to see feedback. Yep. On um, who you want to see. Absolutely. One other thing I just want to shout out, Uh because I've been to this theater a few times, the quaintest part of Harvard of Grace that you've ever been in. There's so much history in the area around the theater. They've got, you know, a VFW hall, the cannon out there, all these placards that you could learn about Harvard of Grace and how we have this French sounding, uh, you know, place in Maryland. So, uh, you know, make an afternoon of it. I've been to the lighthouse and the water. There's a little uh, grill that you can get food there. There's, you know, some, you can see all the ships and stuff. Like, it's actually pretty interesting up there. It but, really is. So yeah. I highly recommend, you know, taking that trip out to Harvard or Gracie and the, the Mushmaster, Tim <laughs> Spriggs, and whoever his next opponent is he takes on. You said yep. overcomes. I wanna, exactly. It's going to be it's gonna be a fight. Uh, whoever you're in there with, they're going to fight you back. So do get your tickets at mcwprowrestling.com so, and follow us on social media. We are putting out a lot of new content. We're on TikTok mm-hmm. now. We're getting active on that. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, you know, little match segments we're putting out there. And, of course, and our um, YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah YouTube. Yeah. I, I got to be honest. I, I think our YouTube channel is one of the best YouTube channels out there as far as independent wrestling. It's cause organized really well. <laughs> because of the different types of content we put out. We're mm-hmm. not just putting out matches, but the MCW yep. cast is featured on there. Backstage you know, pass. Backstage um, pass. Um, you know. Flashback Friday, in fact, this week is Megan Bain versus G.S. Scott at Monster Mash 2021. Nice. Yeah. That was not, a tr- not too much not of a too flashback, hard, yeah. right? But right. that was another theater show that we mm-hmm. did there as well. And that so. was the MCW debut, right, of Megan Bain, who it unfortunately was. Yes. Now suffered a serious shelf, injury. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the mm. shelf. Um, Rising shit. star, yeah. lots of eyes on her, and then and what was it? ACL, right? ACL yeah, injury at the ACL. worst time. So yeah. right when she was getting a yep. lot of buzz in AEW, but uh, as we've all kind of discussed, she's got the look and yeah. the, and charisma and personality. Yeah. She's up, was here on the cast with us. Um, she's going to be fine. Yeah, uh, she will be. Totally a, little, agree. a little bump in the road for her, um, but you can watch that watch that debut on on. Uh, Flashback Friday this coming mm-hmm. week. And not to, That's you know, right. bring it back to my point earlier or to get you shook, Tim, but those types of things happen. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Megan Bain was, was on her, she was on her way. Yeah, yeah right um, there. Doing AEW, yeah. about to get a lot of buzz going around. A lot of buzz, yeah, yeah, you know. Every, you know, yeah. She Just kind of like you, was, Tim, you know. With, around the time of that happened, she was like this. She had kind of e- almost eclipsed Leo at uh, one point as the most searched on our YouTube site. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, was showing that that kind of you get a gauge for how much mm-hmm. buzz someone's getting online. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the injury. But she'll be fine. Yes. As I'm sure Tim Spriggs will be. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to be the harbinger <laughs> of, uh, you know, like things to come or anything like that. It's Are just you trying that, to jinx me. Not at all. I want to see you go so I far. Feel like he really wants to see you kick some ass. So I, I don't uh, think he's jinxing so, you at so all. Yeah, uh, every, uh, a lot of it. People know I have a background in announcing MMA, BJJ, yeah. boxing. And, um, you know, sometimes when you're at those shows, there's only maybe one or two bangers, you know, like real kind of like the way that the whole crowd is on their feet. A lot of technique, you know. So sometimes it's not as exciting as a pro wrestling event where there's always going to be excitement. And since there's always going to be excitement, I want to see how exciting it's going to be when Tim Spriggs get in, gets in there mm-hmm. with a caliber of athlete on his level. I want to see you get through someone, you know, that's maybe uh, with a little bit more expertise in the same types yeah. of uh, combat that you have. Uh, if you can get through them as quickly as you got through GFED. I'm looking forward to it. I All right. can't wait. Well, we are looking forward to seeing what you have next. Uh, when? How can people follow you? Are you active on social media? Do you? Yes, you can go okay. to Tim Spriggs BJJ on Facebook and Instagram. And I know you're okay. not that active, but tell us your Twitter because Larry's a big Twitter. Okay, I only <laughs> have a burner. I do not. That's my burner. Thank you. So, I do not use Twitter either. So Mushmaster, you're never on it. You never really do anything. I have a burner. That's a, let's just keep it at that. That yep. is my burner. Um, here's the thing, man. I, I, Twitter's fun and everything, but the less I have to deal with these pro wrestling fan dweebs that just, <laughs> you know, all they do is just dig, try to look up dirt and everything instead of looking for a girlfriend or a hot shower, uh, the better. So I don't have a Twitter, but you guys can find me at Tim Spriggs BJJ on Instagram and Facebook. If you're a beautiful woman, please slide in the DMs. I may respond, but you need to put in your resume. <laughs> 
Well, Tim, I think that you have made so many fans yes. of this episode of the MCW cast, and I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm serious mm -hmm. because um, the way that you have essentially attached this microphone, if you will, and said your piece uh, with pride and, and gusto, uh, it just leaves me wanting more. So more of Tim Sprids right That's here right. at MCW Pro. We'll see you next time next Tuesday for another exciting and insightful edition of the MCW cast. You, you play, play me.